race day dawns bright, if not clear. The fastest field in the history of the track awaits a crowd of 350,000 fans. The pre-race hoopla goes off on schedule, with a special ovation for 23 just-returned prisoners of war on hand to watch this particular bit of Americana. But the skies don't hold. On and off rains cause a four-hour delay in the start. Crews are nervous. When the weather breaks, officials give the go-ahead. There is a palpable release of tension as the business of racing begins. All the last-minute details push everything else out of mind. This is what they're here for. unable to find their proper places. Instead of a neat lineup in the pace lap, the field looks like a freeway traffic jam. Somebody screwed us up. Sweet didn't get the pole position. I don't even know where I was. But the starter waves the green flag, and the cars leap into the race. Salt Walter careens into a wire mesh fence, spewing 75 gallons of burning fuel onto the crowd. A dozen spectators are injured. Walter, at 25, the youngest driver on the track, is badly burned. The race proceeds slowly under the yellow flag, but by now the drizzle has turned into a downpour, and officials call for the red flag. The lineup for the second day start is no more organized than the first, but there is an urgency now to get on with it, as if a start could somehow hold back the rain which threatens again. But it's a vain hope. With drops already spattering on their helmets, the drivers follow the pace car to the red flag. so far dry. Less than half the fans wait through five uncertain hours to early afternoon. Then... A break in the clouds makes it seem as if the ominous events of the past week have been settled somehow. The jinx lifted. Athletes key themselves up to an event. Postponement winds nerves tight but the strain imposed by the two false starts dissolves in the roar of the powerful engines. Olive's death is not forgotten, but for the moment set aside. Walter is hurt, but okay. And the race is on. Hearts leap as smoke signals trouble on the third turn. But the only casualty is a burnt out motor and the pace car leaves the field to the races. and a white eagle takes the early lead. His brother Al is also in this race. A third brother injured in a racing accident years ago and now confined to a motorized wheelchair is chief mechanic. On the second lap, Bobby Ellison, star of the southern stock car circuit, is forced to pack it in with engine trouble. We were keeping up a good clip but it wasn't sprint time, you know? The track was slick, and, well, we were just kind of cautious. On the fourth lap, Peter Revson slides into a wall. 
he survives. By the ninth lap, Sweet Savage has gotten back up to third place. His average speed so far is 180. He turns in for a pit stop for fuel and a fresh pair of right side tires, the side that gets most wear on the bank turns. In record time, his crew has the car ready to roll again. Gordon Johncock in number 20 has been moving up and the third STP driver, rookie Graham McRae, is holding his own. The pit stop drops Savage back. Johncock now holds third place. By the 58th lap, Savage has overtaken Johncock and is threatening the new leader, Al Unser. Savage loses control. As fire trucks race across the pit area to the site of the crash, an STP mechanic Armando Terran runs to help. Teron are both rushed to the hospital. Teron is dead on arrival. Savage will hang on for a month before this race takes its final toll. When rain finally halts the race, John Cock is declared winner. New safety standards follow, but the race is still to the swiftest.